understanding how a 17th century suit is actually put on is a huge step in learning how to work and live in a historical way in these clothes. Here I am in my undergarments and I am about to get dressed into a suit. So I'm gonna turn sideways here so you don't see anything you're not supposed to, but I've got my linen under breeches here and they're basically cut like a pair of Venetians. Um, they are these are relatively slim fitting around the thigh and the knee, but there is a version in uh, the Rijksmuseum in the Netherlands that is uh, quite a bit more full around the waist and around the knee. But what I'm doing here is I'm actually using this shirt to kind of bulk up my hips a little bit. These shirts come all the way down to the knee, so there's a lot of extra length and it just kind of wadded up inside the top and it acts like a little hip roll. Now here's the suit that I'm going to put on and you'll notice it's already tied together. Now, if you look on the inside, you can see that I've used these lacing points. Now these are just little strips of bias tape that I poked through the holes and then you tie them underneath the skirting and it helps hold the skirting out as well. And you, sometimes you see a little bit of a peaking underneath here, which is totally fine. You see it often in paintings as well. You know, I mean, it really looks like a jumpsuit. So I usually let the doublet just fall behind and then I'll step into one leg, I'll step into the other leg, and then just pull it on. Now you'll notice that I've still got the waist tied. And that's because I mis put a long enough cord in there that I don't really have to worry about taking it all the way out. It's such a waste of time to try to re-thread through all those holes when I can just make a long tie and loosen them and be able to slip it down oh, over my hips without really worrying. This motion that I'm doing is to try to get my sleeve, my shirt sleeve, to sit further down inside. Pulling the doublet collar up and now I'm just going to fold the shirt collar over the doublet collar just to keep it in place where it needs to be. All right, now I'm here. I really want to have these ties all the way up to the top. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna tie my breeches closed, just like that. Now I'm gonna use the same tie and I'm going to start coming through the doublet. I'm starting in the bottom hole because this uh, style of doublet lines up well with the bottom hole. You always have to determine where the tie is going to line up based on the time period and style of your suit. So I'm through one, I'll do two. All right, now you can see these are all laced and that same cord comes through and then is laced through the holes in the doublet. And I'm going to pull up to tighten the breeches and then I will tug down to tighten the doublet. And then I will tie in a bow to keep it secure, just like this. And then I'm just gonna tuck the ends inside and button up. Now doublets are quite roomy in the chest with as much as four inches of ease through the chest, but they're usually quite tight in the waist. And that can mean as little as half an inch to three quarters of an inch of ease in the waist. Now, this one's just a little bit tighter than I want it to be because I've put on some weight during COVID, but it still fits nice. I like the way it hangs. I like what it does for my physique. <laughs> and now I just need to fasten my fly. And the way these breeches work, there is a very large inverted pleat right at the front. And that means that my buttons are hidden underneath here and the fly kind of extends across the opening. So I'm gonna button from the top, there's five buttons in this fly. So there's one, there's two, I think the bottom one's already fastened, three, four, yes, and five is already fastened at the bottom. And then I'm just going to tuck the corner of the fly flap in and look at that, you can't even see that there's buttons on it. It just completely disappears. And I think that this is one of the reasons why people misunderstand how a lot of breaches were closed is because you can't see anything, so they assume that there's no buttons and no buttonholes, but there are a few extant pairs which actually do have them in the 17th century. In the 16th century, a lot of it was done with lacing points because the cod piece was a little bit more popular back then. Now that I'm in, I'm gonna go ahead and fasten my, my cuffs on my doublet. So what I'm wearing right now, this is an all season suit. This would probably have been the bare minimum that a guy would have typically walked around wearing. 
just doublet and breeches at the very minimum. Typically there was a, a jacket that went on top called a jerkin. In Spanish it's called a ropilla, which is also just Spanish for jacket. And I have one here. Now this one is meant to have a lot of buttons going all the way down, but this literally just throw on top. If you consider it like a three-piece suit, you've got your doublet, which is roughly equivalent to your waistcoat, then you've got your breeches, and then you've got your jacket that goes over it. Now, because my doublet and breeches match, I would most likely fasten the bottom of this garment and then leave it open up at the top so that you can see the doublet and the breeches match. Now, in a situation where it's my jacket and my breeches that match and the doublet is a different color, I might actually fasten at the top and leave it open below so that you can see the jacket and the breeches together and then you see the contrasting doublet inside. There's lots of different ways to style and dress it. You have to find out what's appropriate for your time period, what's appropriate for your own taste, and then once everything is set, then I would take this collar and I will put it on top. Now this one I've designed to just be tied at the neck, but it would look best, I think, if I fastened this jacket at the very top. There we go. So now I can take this collar and spread it out attractively over my shoulders. And this is bobbin lace and a little bit of open work in the linen itself. I could also add cuffs. My breeches have pockets. Something which definitely shows up frequently in historical clothing is pockets. We don't tend to think of pockets as a historical thing, but they really are. At least this kind of pocket, it's in front. And then you can see the way everything drapes in back. So the next time you get dressed in your historical suit, I hope that you will observe some of these uh, very functional, very utilitarian ways of getting into your clothes. I think that they're really wonderful, as particularly the whole jumpsuit thing where the breeches tie on to the doublet. It just makes everything effortless to wear, makes it a lot easier to put together. And especially when you tie them before you put them on, I mean, it's so awkward to like get everything tied as you're going around. And then if you have to use the bathroom, and we all have to use the bathroom, I really like, people try to avoid talking about it, but it's super necessary. So if you are at an event and you need to use the restroom, one of the things that I typically do is I'll have a dressing gown with me and I will, I will either run behind a curtain if I can and take Take everything off and throw my dressing gown on and then run to the restroom and come back and re get and get dressed again or if I don't have the dressing gown with me I'll just go into a large enough stall because we're usually using modern restrooms and then just take the whole suit off because it's a jumpsuit so I'll just take it off I'll do my business I'll put it back on and then be on my way. It's just faster to make the choice to take the whole thing off. And when it's all tied together on its own, it's actually really fast and easy. Like I can get out of this in just a matter of seconds compared to some contraptions, which take a whole lot longer. There's a lot of reasons why you will benefit from having it put together like a jumpsuit. And to show you how quickly I can get out of it, let me just take this off, take this off, Gonna set that there. And generally speaking, it's it's just the reverse of all of it. Let me grab my ties here. It's been what, 10 seconds so far? Okay. I'm gonna pull that. Pull that. And look at that. It's already coming off. Out of it in about a minute. There you go. That's your tutorial on basic dressing processes for a man's 17th century suit. Thank you so much, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. Mm -hmm.